Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm really sorry I haven't done a video for a while. We've had a mad time uh, moving in and settling into our new place um, and lots of stress and illness to, to battle through. Um, so anyway, back, back now and having a little chat today about uh, the topic of screen time. So I'm sure you guys, if you follow our family and our philosophy, you won't be surprised to hear that we don't limit screen time in, in our household. Um, so yeah, we really respect um, that kids do need lots of time in nature, um, but also I think we're raising our kids um, for a world where that we weren't raised for. It's a, a new age now where um, a lot of the time you can make your money through working online and on computers. Um, so I think I feel personally to um, not allow children to embrace and fully master this skill would be robbing them of a, a potential opportunity to earn an amazing passive income in their future should that be the, the road they go down um, so for us personally all three children do have access to computers um, they do not have access to social media i'm, I'm very um in agreement with people that um have strong limits and uh, restrictions on that because it is very dangerous for children. It's, um, I mean, personally for, for us as adults, we didn't really grow up with it. So it's a, a new experiment, social media, and it can be very dam damaging to, to um, even our mental health, let alone children's mental health when they get into the arena of um, being exposed to people that might be dangerous for them and also um, being bullied and, and judged online, um, which is a big reason why we personally respect our eldest child's decision um, not to showcase himself in our media things anymore. Um, and we always give our children an option in that. Um, so yeah, let me go through how the free kids use it. So we don't have a television set. We've never had television channels or Netflix or anything in the house, but they do all have access to an iPad. And the eldest one, Yuli, he has um, a big gaming station in his room because um, that's one of his great passions. So he has an Xbox, um, a Nintendo Switch and a laptop. And he um, will like binge watch YouTube videos on all sorts of subjects. And it's, his, it's cho his, how he likes to learn. He likes to learn online. Um, so he does spend large uh, volumes of time in front of screens and we do encourage him out uh, he doesn't like big groups um, so socially he always has only like really one-on-one -on -one social interactions most of the time um, so for him it's really it's a great outlet for him to have this social world online even though I, I do acknowledge it's not the same thing as being out there in the world with real life interactions um, because he has um, I think he's possibly highly functioning on the spectrum even though we've never had an assessment um so because of that uh socially in, in a sensory way he gets very overwhelmed um so it's it's great for him he's been able to build that community of online gamers and and have those connections those meaningful connections which which we all need whether we do whatever method we choose to obtain that um so i would say he's he's the one that we are most cautious about having reoccurring conversations, two-way conversations with him about um, his balance of the use of technology um, and, and getting him out to do more. Uh, but the girls are, are pretty balanced. They're allowed to, to watch what they want on YouTube. Um, we do have kids YouTube for the kids, so for the little ones. So he, um, they um, are monitored what they are watching. They don't just go off and watch whatever and, and we don't kind of keep an eye on it because um, there is definitely dangerous stuff out there and even within the, the kids YouTube funny things can pop up so we're, we're always interacting with them about what they're watching how they're finding it um, the messages being conveyed to them um, and I think in that way then it doesn't become their main cultural influence but it becomes a, a two-way dialogue that we're able to contribute to um, and help them make sense of, of what's being portrayed um, to them with it. But yeah, so in, in a kind of in a conclusion, in a nutshell, it's 
no to social media for for young children for us even all the way up to maybe still uni hasn't got any um social media at 12 years old so i do i do really agree it's late teens into young adulthood that i think really is the safest time to introduce social media if at all if they want it at all um but with regards to having access to screens gaming i think gaming really does provide a large variety of amazing cognitive skills that they can learn from it if you allow them and um do i do i think sitting gaming for hours is a waste of time no i don't i think there's skills that they pick up that that we maybe aren't fully able to acknowledge ourselves that um can be very important for a lot of things they do later on in life um, Peter Gray in Psychology Today talks a lot about the benefits of gaming and the skills um, that they can pick up through this. Uh, I'll link the articles in the description below for that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think anything, if you make it the forbidden fruit, becomes a dangerous thing. Um, and I often find the kids that do have, that we meet, that do have restrictive screen time, once they get hold of it, they'll, they really will want to binge on it and it's like naughty sugary treats as well but if they do have access to it and don't feel like it's a forbidden fruit they're much more likely to use it in a balanced and healthy way um so yeah i'm very aware of the sort of the inherent risks of there being so much screen time um, available to our children as they grow up now um but also i think as long as you have a healthy interactive relationship with your children you can totally um navigate this without having to set the hard controls on um on their choices but um yeah so that's that's my conclusion of, of how we how we navigate the uh the stormy waters of technology um but yeah basically i think for if you do deny your children of it completely or really put strict limits on then you might be robbing them of of really mastering a passion that they might use later on to um to make into a career so yeah just do do be careful about how you um how you project your fears onto your children because what might seem like a, a scary thing for them to be indulged in it might be their future their future passion and career so yeah don't go all guns blazing just step back and take a deep breath it doesn't have to be a fearful all-consuming thing as long as you're there with them to help navigate it and make sense of the world okay well i'll be back again soon hopefully with another video comment below on any topics that you'd like to see covered and um yeah hopefully next time it won't be such a large gap till the next video thanks a lot guys take care